you watched yesterday's video, you will know that I didn't realise that Folktale Week was so flipping close. And while I've done two pictures that I'm happy with posting, I haven't done the other five, <laughs> including today's post. I'm going to hold it lightly. I don't want stress associated with this. I'm not getting paid to do it. I'm doing it because it's a good opportunity for me to practice doing finished illustrations, practice doing illustrations based on a story that isn't mine. And that's it. So it's not like I'm going to lose my job if I don't do it. It's just a bit of fun, but it's a bit of fun I'd like to be involved in. So hopefully I'll get a picture done today for today's prompt. If I don't get it done today, I'm happy posting the prompts up on different days. So there's always that.
who was once a farmer who had three sons. One day, when the boys were grown to manhood, he said to them, Each of you chop down a tree, then take the direction in which the fallen tree points. I'm sure that each of you, if you go far enough in the direction, will find a suitable bride. The youngest son's tree pointed straight into the forest. He started off with a brave front, but after he had gone some distance in the forest, his courage began to ebb. So there it is, lost. I didn't want to put too much detail into it because when you are in the dark, it is very low detail. You'll know yourself if you've got up in the middle of the night. You can't make out whether that jumper on your, hanging on the back of your door is a person or a jumper. It's just very shady detail. I'm really pleased with how this has turned out. The colors have, been fantastic. I, I started with my greenish blue, which is the neo colour, greenish blue. You might have seen me using uh, the palette. I don't know what the what the camera showed, but these are just shavings off the neo colour crayon. It's the neo colour two crayon. And so when I've sharpened it, I've sharpened it into there and then used that as a paint. I started off with the green. I think it creates a nice undertone. I use this as kind of a reference. This is the picture I did a little while ago of Rolly in the woods. And I enjoyed, in this one, I enjoyed the green. It made it bright and lively, but it was too light for this one. It felt too <laughs> too joyful when he was in the woods. So I decided to darken it all down with the indigo. Again, with the um, indigo Neo Colour 2 shavings used as a watercolour. And made it go darker into the background rather than lighter, which this one is. It's lighter in the background, suggesting the sun shining through there, but there's no sun in this one. So because of the materials that I used, so some of them were pastels, uh, I'm just going to spray that with a fixative. Now you can either use hairspray or you can buy very posh fixative for um so i've got so i've got both but i've also got this it's a fixative charcoal and pastels if you're doing any of these kind of internet challenges or daily challenges it's very easy to get stressed out about them. Um, I used to a lot and I still find that old kind of feeling creeping, creeping into my daily practice. And I suppose it's very easy to say, don't get stressed out by it, but that's basically what I'm going to say. And even with me doing art <coughs> as my kind of career for years, it's really only in this last year that I've been able to create without that feeling that it's got to be good, it's got to be finished, it's got to be neat, it's got to be tidy, it's got to be brilliant, it's got to be Instagrammable. If you're new to the channel, you might not know this, but if you've been here for a little while, you'll know that I've taken a year out from making things to sell in my small business and, and with the intention of focusing on me, on my observational skills, on my sketchbooking, I basically knew that I needed to change because when I was doing things like this, uh, like folktale week or you know the three materials challenge or uh, inktober anything that i've kind of done in the past i would get so stressed out about it and art wasn't fun anymore so i knew that i needed to change a little bit and i'll link the video to my explanation of why i've taken a euro either here or here and if you don't find a link pop up here have a look in the video description and it'll be there so if you want to know more about the euro uh, process and how I've kind of found my confidence with being messy uh, I definitely go and watch that video um, but basically try to embrace the mess and the chaos that happens around art don't believe the Pinterestable Instagrammable social media perfection hype you know, it's okay just to scribble some things down, not everything works. 
and it's okay to make mistakes because when you make mistakes and you play and you hold it lightly and see it for what it is and you give yourself the opportunity to go, this might not turn out and that's fine. It doesn't mean I'm a bad person. It doesn't mean I'm rubbish at everything. Uh, if you give yourself that flexibility and, and space to make mistakes, that's where you experiment with new materials. So on this, on this picture that I was doing today, I used pastel to get the kind of dark murkiness on the top of that. And I added yellow crayon to the trees to show the light shining onto it. I wouldn't have known how to do that before if it hadn't been for me playing in my sketchbook and just scribbling different materials down on top of each other and going, oh, that's worked up. Oh, that's not worked. That's fine. I didn't stop when I made a mistake, which has made my development so much quicker because before I used to stop if I made something that was ugly or not something, something that I couldn't put on Instagram and it would eat me up. But now I'm happy with making mistakes. And since I've stopped focusing on the end result and started to focus on the process, so a lot of you will know already, I do a lot of time sketches. So I focus on trying to get as much down as I can in like, what, two minutes, three minutes, one minute. And I focus on the time rather than focusing on the end result. And since I've started doing that, I actually like the end result more. And I don't know if that's because I've loosened up and therefore my end results are better, or it's just that I'm a lot kinder to myself. And in that kindness, I've found my style, which I'm happier with. So yeah, I'll, I'll link that video to explanations about my year out below, and I'll try and link it up here as well. Definitely go and have a look at that if you're finding yourself in a bit of a rut creatively. And you also, if you also get that kind of self-hatred feeling if things don't turn out right, I'm going to have to go and get Rolly, he's biting my brushes. If you want to check out the book that I got the story from, which was my inspiration for today's folk tale, I'm not sponsored, I found it in a charity shop. It's called Nordic Tales and it's folk tales from Norway, Sweden, Finland, Iceland and Denmark with the illustrations by Ulla Final. I don't know if I've said the name right, but it's a nice book, good illustrations. And the reason this, this, this finding this book made me want to do folk tale week was because there were stories that I'd never heard of before. So I didn't already have an image, like a Disney image in my head of what the story tale was. So I wasn't gonna be comparing myself to like Disney's Snow White or whatever. And neither was anyone else. When they were looking at my pictures, they weren't going to be going, that's not Snow White, or that's not what Red Riding Hood looks like. I mean, people in Nordic countries might, <laughs> but people in my like immediate family circle and friend circle probably aren't going to have heard of these stories. Uh, they're not as mainstream is what I mean. So that's like one thing that attracted me to the idea of trying Folktale Week this, this year. So I ha already had a resource of, of non-mainstream tales that I could dip into. Not only was I reading new stories, which is nice, it was something new that I wasn't going to be drawing on any ideas that I'd already seen, if that makes sense. So that was good. And this is where I'm going to leave the video because I do need time to edit it. But thank you so much for joining me and I hope you enjoyed it. And until the next one, bye.